In our discussion on electric generators, we said that inside an electric generator, an EMF is induced that varies sinusoidally. And, that's, and that induced EMF creates an alternating electric current. Now, within power plants, the electric generators usually create an EMF that has a very high value and before households and businesses can use that voltage that voltage must be decreased within the power lines and the devices that decrease the voltage are known as transformers so once again electric generators in power plants produce alternating current which then travels to households however before it actually reaches the houses and buildings the voltage must be decreased and the device that decreases or increases voltages is known as a transformer so these transformers consist of a primary and a secondary coil that are linked by a laminated iron core as shown in the following diagram. Now the reason we laminate the iron core is to reduce the occurrence of eddy currents. So let's examine our diagram of our transformer. So our electric generator is found somewhere in that region. It creates that alternating electric current which then travels through the following wire eventually reaching the primary coil. As that changing electric current passes through our loops of wire it essentially creates a changing magnetic field in the same way that a magnetic field is created inside a solenoid. So that changing magnetic field then travels to the following region of our iron and when it travels through the loops of the secondary wire that changing magnetic field induces a change in magnetic flux and by Faraday's law whenever we have a changing magnetic flux that will essentially induce an EMF inside the wire so an EMF a voltage will be induced in the secondary coil and that voltage will have the same exact frequency as the voltage in the primary coil so as a result of that induced EMF in a secondary coil, an alternating electric current will begin to flow through the secondary coil and that current will eventually reach the various types of devices found in households and businesses such as computers shown by the following resistor sign. So once again, an alternating electric current in the primary coil which was produced by the electric generators produces a changing magnetic field inside the iron much like inside a solenoid as shown in this region now the changing magnetic field couples around to the other side of our laminated iron and this produces an alternating current in the secondary coil as per Faraday's law. Now let's examine the following two equations. Equation number one describes the primary coil while equation number two describes the secondary coil. Recall in our discussion on electric generators we were essentially able to derive the following equation. The induced EMF as a result of our alternating current is equal to the product of the rate of change of our magnetic flux multiplied by the number of loops so let's look at our prime <clears throat> So let's look at our primary coil. The primary coil contains n number of loops. Let's call that NP. And this gives us the primary voltage, the voltage found on the primary coil. So PV is equal to PN multiplied by the rate of change of our magnetic flux with respect to time. Likewise, the secondary voltage on the secondary coil that is induced is equal 
to the product of the number of loops on the secondary coil and that's multiplied by the rate of change of our magnetic flux with respect to time. So these two quantities are exactly the same because remember the frequency of the induced EMF in the secondary coil has the same frequency as the one in the primary coil. So these two are the same. Now let's move to the second step. Let's now take the second equation and divide it by the first. So Vs divided by Vp and that is equal to this divided by this. So these two cancel and we get the following equation. So the ratio of the secondary voltage to the primary voltage is equal to the ratio of the secondary number of loops to the primary number of loops and this is known as the transformer equation. Now the transformer equation only works as long as we have an alternating electric current. If our electric current was a DC current then the magnetic field produced inside the iron would not be a changing magnetic field but it will be a constant magnetic field and so that means because we have a constant magnetic field Field, there would be no magnetic flux inside this region and no electric current would be induced in the secondary coil. So the electric current must be an alternating current for the transform equation to actually work. Now, notice what this tells us. So it tells us that if our voltage on the secondary is higher than the voltage on the primary, that means we have a greater number of coils on the secondary coil than on the primary coil. Now these voltages can be either RMS voltages or the peak voltages. So now let's define two different types of transformers. We have step up transformers and step down transformers. Now if the number of loops on the secondary coil is greater than the number of loops on the primary coil, then the transformer is a step up transformer and the voltage is essentially increased. On the other hand, if the number of loops on the primary is higher than the number of loops on the secondary coil, then the transformer is known as a step-down transformer and our voltage will decrease. So let's discuss an ideal transformer. Inside an ideal transformer, the amount of power that is inputted is equal to the amount of power that is outputted. So power input is equal to power output. Now because power is equal to the product of the electric current and the voltage, we see that our product of the electric current in the primary coil multiplied by the voltage in the primary coil is equal to the electric current in a secondary coil multiplied by the voltage in the secondary coil. This is known as our power equation for transformers.